Hi, in this video, I'll be discussing the development of the prefrontal cortex from adolescence to late adulthood. First, it's important to establish that the brain continues to develop from birth. And at what age the brain is fully formed depends from person to person with many factors coming into play. But a big determinant of this would be a person's genes. Some neurologists say the brain is fully formed at 18 years, while others say it continues to develop up until your mid-20s and early 30s. After that, your brain starts to deteriorate over time, albeit at a much slower rate than its growth. So, this is what we'll be focusing on in this video, how the prefrontal cortex grows and develops in adolescence, and how it declines and continues to decline beyond adulthood. Two important stages occur in the brain that helps us understand brain development. These are the overproduction of neurons, or growth spurts, and pruning, or the process by which the brain cleans old neurons to make room for new, stronger ones to develop. Gray matter consists of neuron cell bodies with a few myelinated axons that make up the brain's surface, and its layers are formed in the gyri, or its folds. Gray matter density increases and decreases over time, but it peaks at the age of 3 to 5 years, and then decreases due to synaptic pruning, but then peaks once more during puberty. It is this process that allows neural circuits to be more efficient. White matter consists of neurons and many myelinated axons, which are located in the subcortical part of the brain. The rate of myelination of axons and cell connections actually increases up until early adulthood, so about 20 years before it stabilizes and evens out. This means faster connections take place during adolescence in the prefrontal cortex. Even the corpus callosum continues to develop up until early adulthood, which means better communication between the left and right hemispheres. The prefrontal cortex has many important functions and responsibilities, so it comes to no surprise that it takes the longest to develop. These different changes show that adolescents and adults process information differently. A study done by Jurgen and Todd et al. is a good example of this in terms of how they differ in their ability to process and understand emotion by observing a person's facial expression. They showed a series of pictures of people who had expressed fear to adolescent participants while using functional magnetic resonance imaging to scan their brains. Compared to that of adults, it was found that their frontal lobes were less active than their amygdala, which is responsible for processing and differentiating emotions such as fear from sadness. Younger teenagers below the age of 14 were more likely to interpret them as sadness or shock, while more of the older teenagers answered correctly and saw their frontal lobes become more active than their amygdala, which tells us that their frontal lobes are developing and on its way to becoming fully formed. In some cases, however, development of the prefrontal cortex seems to go backwards. Sometimes you find younger teenagers, such as 13-year-olds, seem to have more developed social abilities than 17-year-olds. This may have something to do with the medial prefrontal cortex, with processing emotional stimuli, and looking into other people's perspective, and the orbital prefrontal cortex in how we predict rewards and punishments for certain actions and social adaptation. When you find an older teenager or young adult, and can get many words out of them, it may be the case that they just find it difficult to communicate, rather than refusing to do so. Beyond age differences, there are also gender differences in the development of the prefrontal cortex. On average, male brains are larger than female brains, but that's not to say that the male brains are more efficient. Gray matter density in the brain actually increases, as well as synaptic pruning, earlier in females, which would mean that female brains start to become more efficient at a younger age. Myelination of axons in white matter actually occurs earlier in females and becomes equal to that of adults, before male brains. But of course, many factors affect these changes, from genes in nature and social and environmental situations in nurture, all affect the rate of brain development. Intelligence in adolescence also develop differently. Although IQ tests and having high IQ as we know doesn't necessarily mean you're a genius, but does correlate with myelination and the speed of which information is processed between the left and right hemispheres and the size of the corpus callosum. The prefrontal cortex, as it's the executive part of the brain, has a big role in intelligence and attention. Brain imaging studies have showed that the prefrontal cortex is very active when participating in academic learning, which requires a lot of attention, and it's also involved in memory retention and recollection. And out of all the areas of the brain, when comparing with other people's brains, there's more of a difference and variation in the structure of our prefrontal cortex although many factors are involved in our academic ability. This includes our environment, how a person grows up can have an effect on how we process information. If someone grew up in a hostile home environment with little room for brain development, then this might result in poor academic abilities. However, if a person grew up in a loving and balanced home environment, they will generally have better social and academic abilities, and their brains will develop normally as they should. But of course, genes also play a role in academic ability and it's how these two factors come together that can overall predict how a person develops. In any case, once you've entered adulthood, your brain unfortunately starts to decline. MRI studies have found some changes that occur in the brain once you've entered this stage. Your cerebral hemispheres decrease in volume by 0.23% per year, frontal lobes at 0.55% per year, 
and the temporal lobes at a rate of 0.28% per year. Ventricles increase in volume by 20% per decade, and 90-year-olds have around 10% fewer neurons than 20-year-olds. Out of all the areas of the brain, the prefrontal cortex suffers the most in terms of decline. This is where the frontal aging hypothesis comes in. This hypothesis suggests that our age and decline in cognitive abilities, as well as emotional stability, relate to the changes we undergo in the prefrontal cortex. Some negative changes occur in our memory and attention, such as shopping, unless we of course have a shopping list written down. In memory recall tests, both recall and registration of words decline, although recall is affected a lot more. Implicit memory, which is learned without any effort, almost subconsciously and automatically processed in the brain and retained in memory, is better maintained than explicit memory with age, which is the opposite, meaning memory from learned information with effort, such as complex ideas or theories, or learning new languages. Working memory also shows some decline. As we've already learned, older adults have more difficulty in retaining information. In a study using the Wisconsin card sorting test, which was mentioned in my last video, older adults were less able to switch and alternate between sorting methods and stayed with one way of sorting the cards, even though they knew they were placing them in the wrong order. If you've ever heard the expression, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, well, this might be true for some, but it's not all bad news. Memories that are to do with large events, such as terror attacks or natural disasters, aren't affected by age. These are called flashbulb memories, and the rate of forgetting doesn't seem to be affected by age. In terms of attention, this does decline with age, as older adults have more difficulty in dividing their attention, so multitasking becomes a bit more difficult. Selective attention declines, so for example, where perhaps someone was used to reading a book in public with some noise, they are unable to do the same comfortably 20 years later. New or unusual skills such as new technology like smartphones, and I'm talking about some of the elderly who haven't seen a smartphone until they are 60 or 70, will have trouble dealing with them because it requires a lot of attentional capacity, but it does become second nature to younger adults and adolescents. However, skills that have already been learned and therefore don't require much attention don't decline. A psychologist named Timothy Salthouse proposed that instead of the decline of the prefrontal cortex being the culprit of overall brain decline, it's the speed at which we process information that affects other brain functions, because if our processing speed declines, so does our memory and attention. As we get older, we seem to be using more brain power than when we were younger. This might have something to do with the decline of the prefrontal cortex and gray and white matter. So its efficiency and speed also decline, and the other brain areas seem to compensate for the prefrontal cortex's loss of normal functioning. A study done by Matai et al. using a simple button pressing task in brain imaging found that older adults over the age of 50 use brain areas that are not present in younger adults when completing the same task. So in terms of motor movement, each hemisphere controls the opposite side of the body. Older adults were actually using both hemispheres when completing the task, compared to younger adults who were using the one hemisphere associated with the side that was pressing the button. This also applies for various other tasks, such as cognitive tasks. So that's it for now. Hopefully after watching this video, it hasn't discouraged you from becoming older, although it is inevitable, but its decline is so slow that it's unlikely you would notice or be bothered by it. Next time, I'll talk about the various techniques and methods for researching and studying cognition and neuropsychology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.